Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I'm going to test out a modification of the Mini Star. The Mini Star was an upper stage designed for the Orion carrier plane. The Orion carrier plane is the first stage and then it lands and the second stage brings the payload to low earth orbit. And this was a hydrogen oxygen second stage derived from the X33 slash Venture Star system from Lockheed and so we have the two aero spikes here and the result of testing and use in to Mars and beyond was that my original model was just too physically big uh, we didn't need all that uh, we uh, had a lot of volume and we weren't using most of it I decided to shrink it and I turned it into the mini star T so if we bring out the original body that I've been using in a to Mars and beyond series and try and compare them here. I have kept the nose the same, so this was a bit of modeling that I had to do. I kept the nose the same because our fairing and adapter are already pretty big compared to the size of the nose, and so it looks rather awkward if I uh, shrink it any more than that, and I don't want to change the mounting system. So kept the nose the same and kept the sort of height of it the same, but changed the width of it and also changed the length of it. And I had to be careful with this because, of course, if you do that, you can alter the RCS ports and these things in the back that hold the RCS ports in such a way that they'll look awkward. So, yeah, a little bit of work in Blender in order to save about four tons of mass is what we get. So this is four tons lighter, but the hydrogen and oxygen it contains is the same because we weren't using all that volume in the first place. So... The goal here is to ensure that the Orion carrier plane can actually land at the Bahamas. Uh, so it needs to be going at 4,000 meters per second when we decouple from it and at a sufficient height. And then we'll know that this all works out. So far, we've been getting to 3,800-ish. And so that was not good. It was sort of condemning the Orion carrier plane to death instead of making it recoverable or we would have to add jet engines to the Orion carrier plane which would not be good either. So we've reduced the size of it in order to save that mass and we'll see how that works out. That's one thing I have to test. But of course if you re reduce the size of this, it has changed the center of mass and center of lift, right? The wings are actually smaller. Uh, the canards are actually, I kept the same size. Uh, and the vertical stabilizers are smaller. So. Uh, we'll see about that, whether I might want to change the size of the canards, but I left let them be because they're, they're sort of okay-ish. When we dump all the hydrogen and oxygen here, we see that the center mass and center lift are pretty close. I've sort of tweaked that, but the balance on the original Maystar was practically perfect. So it makes me sort of sad uh, that we have to sort of figure it all out but from scratch when the Maystar was doing so well. But here we are. And as you can see, the system here is 28.29 tons dry and 157 tons with the propellant. So I don't consider that very unreasonable. I think that's like in real life doable and I'll stick to that. So with that all being said, let's launch it on the Orion carrier plane and see if we get the Orion carrier plane to a good speed. We won't do the landing. As long as we get to 4,000 meters per second and a decent height, I will assume that it can land. And then we'll test the re-entry with this because that's one thing I'm worried about. Uh, is it still good on re-entry like the Mini Star had been? Or have we changed it too much and we're going to have to tweak the center of mass and center of lift or something, change the size of these, all that business in order to get re-entry looking okay. So, to the VAB. So it doesn't look very different. It is shorter, but not by that much that uh, you might notice. And what we have in here is 42 tons of gas. So that's what we're testing it against, a 42 ton payload. And it's possible we should just reduce the payload capacity, but it would be nice to carry 42 tons for the reasons for the missions that we have in to Mars and beyond. We really want that capacity. So uh, let's bring out to our launch pad at Tampico and see how it does. It's really an unexpectedly cute little thing there. 
I mean, I didn't really expect it to end up being this small because it is hydrogen and oxygen. You know, hydrogen takes up a lot of volume and the Orion carrier plane is methane and oxygen. You don't expect this sort of ratio between the upper stage and the first stage, but that's what it has ended up being. So I, I guess I can't say anything more than that. So SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. And launch. I mean, you can sort of see why I might have been caught by surprise that it should be this size. Everything looking good here as we pass the speed of sound. Oh, I didn't. I don't know why I was only at partial throttle there. I moved my throttle up to the top. Okay, turning some off and rolling. Uh, it's a bit tight still. No, uh, that's not gonna cut it. I think I may need to launch a little bit more efficiently, but yeah, that's rough. Hmm, cutting four tons out does not seem to have done quite enough, but maybe it was just my launch profile. So I'm gonna try again and try to hold prograde a little bit more closely because this does have a lot of drag associated with it since, you know, all this stuff is not on the top of the first stage that basically doubles the drag, right? I mean, if cutting four tons out doesn't help, cutting two tons out of the payload isn't going to help much, and I really don't want to go below 40 tons on the payload. Otherwise, our methane oxygen upper stage, which is recoverable, uh, is just as good. It's shaped like a pod, so it's less complicated, has less dry mass. So... At that point, uh, this Hydrolox cute little space plane stops having any benefit. Okay, so, but also I had accidentally been throttled down even though my physical throttle was all the way to the top. So maybe that had an effect. Alright, so with that being said, ignition and launch. Okay, pass the speed of sound again. Trying to hug that prograde vector. Okay, switch off and roll. Yeah, 3,900. Not exactly where I wanted to be, but let's just move on for now and I'll think about it. I think I need to get a KOS script that can uh, handle the launch and maybe you'll be able to do it a little bit better. Let's make sure we can do the rest of it. Okay, and um Well actually I'll just circularize it. We'll do another burn with the OMS engines and circularize. In this case, I tuned down the OMS engines a little bit, so basically they're BE7s. They're 40 kilonewtons each. Okay, well, that'll be good enough for now. Uh, let us get it into daylight for the separation, and then we'll hang out for a day to line up again with our landing site. So I'll just go normal and then separate off the payload. We won't separate off the adapter yet because that needs to be deorbited. I tuned down the RCS thrusters as, as well. They're only 1.2 kilonewtons now. They were 2.4 to match the space shuttle's RCS thrusters. But this is its dry mass is much uh, much less than the space shuttle, so it shouldn't need that much. Okay, let me just pop off the payload. Get the fuel cell on. Without the payload though, this has quite a lot of extra delta V. We could carry more payload if if we could somehow... We need to get the Orion carrier plane to have a little bit more delta V. Maybe... Let me double check its volume and see if we can squeeze some more in there. Okay, this is our final orbit before descent. 
I'm going to try 134 degrees east. Okay. Well, probably not worth getting it more accurate than that. Let's get the adapter off. We do have extra propellant coming back down, it looks like. <laughs> the, the net result of me saving mass in this has so far been that we're coming down with more propellant. <laughs> it doesn't help any. I mean, we, we could carry more uh, payload, but it hasn't helped the Orion carrier plane as much as I was hoping. Uh, so we should just dump more propellant, uh, basically, I guess. We should dump maybe four extra tons of propellant as well. Okay, off it goes. Nice and smooth like that. All right, we are now in the atmosphere. The extra propellant does bring our center of mass further forward. So it might be good to dump some of that, but we'll see how it goes. We'll take a look at the pitch indicator. With the former version of the Mini Star, basically it wasn't using much RCS at all coming back down. Uh, but I was thinking that the orbit location is actually meant for Cape Canaveral. It's too far for Tampico. That should have deorbited earlier than that. But we'll see. Maybe this has more drag than, you know, like a space shuttle. Yeah, it's a little bit nose heavy. Probably because of the extra propellant. Looks like it's pitching up a bit. Not a whole lot, though. So little that's not showing the RCS thruster puffs. Some of our consumption is actually for the fuel cell. Okay, we have crossed the west coast of Mexico and we are looking like this on our path right now. We're in line with Tampico for sure. Uh, that's fine. It's just that we're probably going to go long. So far so good as far as stability, just a little bit too nose heavy, I think. But uh, again, that's probably because of the extra propellant we're carrying compared to what we would normally want. Well, this is the Tampico area, I don't know. It should pop up with the terrain. We we're at 66 kilometers, but it should show up at like a 100 kilometer range. But it's not popping up. Oh well. I'll have to double check that number. And yeah, it looks like the Gulf of Mexico, unless we somehow glide all the way to the southern tip of Florida. Which is not impossible. Alright, well, we're, we're certainly stretching it. It's sort of getting to the Florida Keys there. And we're at 57 kilometers in altitude. Still basically half of our orbital velocity and we're just using a little bit of pitch as we have before so it's not too bad on that we certainly haven't used a lot of fuel to hold ourselves steady uh it looks like we're a little bit too far south i don't know if we can make the turn into florida you can see the southern tip of florida right there far is told the dimensions of the wings but it doesn't really do body lift, so we will see how it goes. It might even be overshooting. Yeah, we're sort of overshooting. Maybe we can make it to the Bahama runway. I don't know, that's stretching it a bit. And again, we are sort of aimed more for that than anything else, it looks like. Well, that's why I put the Bahama runway there. It's very convenient. Maybe, just maybe, I should use the engines a bit. But then again, maybe that'll make us overshoot. We're still at a height when the OMS engines would be useful. I'll give it a go. Let's dump some fuel anyway. Okay, well, honestly, I think we're okay. Okay, I'm gonna have it start pitching down here. 
I'm trying to dive steeply to burn off the energy quicker. I think our vertical stabilizers are more than sufficient for that. The lower you are at a high speed, the more it taxes the vertical stabilizers. I think there's time for atmospheric autopilot. Really decelerating thanks to the atmosphere here. But our runway, which should eventually pop up, is right here. Hopefully it'll pop up. <laughs> there's the terrain. Uh, I think I see the runway there. Well, RCS off. Now we're losing speed a bit, but that's probably okay. I think we're still good for landing on a runway here. I tend to have more trouble coming in hot than lacking in velocity. And we don't have air brakes on here or a drag chute or anything like that right now. Yeah, we're a little bit fast actually. Uh, doing... Too many maneuvers to slow down might not be such a good idea. Especially with the Orion carrier plane, that is always what gets me. Trying to slow down using the air brakes and then the landing gear also tends to shift things a bit. But this is remarkably well controlled throughout re-entry and through this too. Yeah, try putting the landing gear down. Yeah, I think I need air brakes. Well, we're gonna have to come down at high speed. The uh, brakes! Oh no, there's not enough runway. <laughs> Definitely not enough runway. Uh, but, you know, okay, other than that, <laughs> other than that, everything worked fine. Uh, this this runway model is interesting because its collider sort of extends like this. Uh, it's not slowing down anymore. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh, I think we went over the edge of it. Ow! <sighs> All right, but but in general it was okay. It's just drag shoots maybe. Um, though air brakes would probably be better for planning's sake. Uh, we don't want to wait until we need the drag chutes. Anyway, it should be able to land at much lower speeds than this. It's just a matter of we were approaching the runway with too much energy. Anyway, it can re-enter is the point. And we do need to tweak it so that it is better for the Orion carrier plane. It's gotten us from 3,800 to 3,900. But I think the upshot is we need to reduce the amount of fuel it carries again. And then the Orion carrier plane will be able to get to 4,000 and everything will work out. We ended up carrying too much fuel down even though we had the 42 ton payload that I want. Um, the other option is to figure out how to stuff some more fuel into the Orion carrier plane. but And then we could carry more payload potentially, but uh, probably that won't end up working out for us. Because it reduces the thrust weight ratio initially and... Anyway, complicated stuff. But anyway, that was the test of the new mini star, the new tighter mini star. And we will see how it works in the To Mars and Beyond series, among other things. So with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.